three most valuable objects in your house right now fall into these categories. Original fine art, painting, sculptures, architectural elements, furniture, even if it's ugly, Aunt Millie's French provincial sofa, you think it's ugly, it's valuable. Ugly's your first clue to value. Your first thing is ugly. If it's ugly, it might be worth something. And jewelry and precious metals, those three categories, there's the money, okay? I'm starting here. Anne, where are you? I'm going to ask you to speak into a microphone. Elaine's going to have the microphone. Speak to it up into your hand like your Lady Gaga. Okay. Okay? Got it. Because I need to hear you and so does everyone else. How'd you acquire it? Hey everyone, this is Pavlina from Pavlina's Kids Place. I'm on location in Daytona Beach at the uh, Fall Home Show with Dr. Lori from the Discovery Channel. Uh, auction Kings, hello. Hi, nice to see you. How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. Good. So, um, as a kid, did you like antiques and like were you attracted to like older stuff? That's a good question. As a kid, yeah, I did like antiques. Um, I used to go flea market shopping with my dad. Yeah, so I enjoyed antiques. And my parents were one generation older than most of my friends' parents. So if my friends' parents were now in their 60s, my parents are now in their 80s. Oh, wow. See what I mean? So yeah. my friends all had younger parents, but I always had older parents and older stuff around. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But as a kid, I did, and I did collect things as a kid because mm -hmm. kids have a keen sense of what's cool and what's hot and what's yeah. really neat, you know? Yeah. So I always say that kids are very good collectors. Yes. Um, they're smart about it. They know how to collect. Like, do you collect anything? I do, actually. Like, um, you know, media passes that you yeah. get? Yeah. I collect those. Yeah, that's a good thing to collect. Yeah, yeah because you're a member of the press. Yeah. And I'm a member of the press, too. I have, a na I have an internationally syndicated column, as well as the television show Auction Kings, which is a lot of fun. But yes, that's a very good question. Uh huh. I did collect um, as a kid, and um, I still collect. Yeah, great. yeah, it's awesome. great. So have you ever been stumped or made a mistake as an appraiser? That's a good question, too. A kid actually stumped me. Really? Yeah. Wow. Um, a five-year-old boy brought a antique corn seeder into one of my public appraisal events, like the event we're doing here. Yeah. And I do about 150 of these events all over the world every year, and I've been doing them for about 15 years. So he came in, and he brought what looked like a big red pole mm -hmm. with a little sort of operation on the top, and it was a corn seeder. And what you would do is you would walk through a field and you would push that pole into the ground yeah. and you would release the seeds. Oh, okay. It was his grandpa's oh, yeah. and I didn't know what it was. <laughs> so sometimes you don't know. And I said, I don't know what this is. Can you talk about this object? Mm -hmm. And he was adorable. He was five and he got up in front of a very large audience and he explained exactly what that was. Wow. Yeah, he was cool. So, yeah. you know, so yes, so he stumped me. His name was Justin. He was in Nottingham, Pennsylvania and I won't forget him because he was the only person who stumped me in 150 shows over the last oh 15 gosh. years and years in museums and years as a university professor he stumped me but I give him his credit because <laughs> I didn't know yeah. but sometimes it's okay to say you don't know you yeah. know yeah and then we all learn together so he taught me something that's crazy that's it's cool, cool huh? yeah, yeah definitely yeah. so how did you like how do people actually become like um, expert appraisers well, I'm different from most appraisers because I went to school for a long time for this particular field. Okay. Most appraisers are, they just, they buy and sell and buy and sell, and then they say, okay, I can appraise because I've been buying and selling. Yeah. I have a PhD in art history from Penn State. I used to teach on that campus on, at Penn State, so I used to be a university professor. I'm a former museum curator and former museum director, and I've worked at places like the Yale University Art Gallery. So I've worked at some of the big museums. I've lectured at museums all over the world, the Hermitage, the Louvre, the Uffizi, um, all different places. And then I decided that it was a good idea for me to know a little bit more about the markets and the markets being this, and that's the expertise that I share on Auction Kings on Discovery Channel. Mm -hmm. So um, where I'm called in as their expert to tell them, what should we expect to command when we sell this object? Mm -hmm. You know, the Civil War sword or the ant or the vintage Kermit the Frog doll <laughs> or that kind of thing at an auction. Mm -hmm. So I'm there to say, you should expect to get $2,000 for this or yeah. $50 for this or whatever it is at the auction. And then at the show, at the end of the show, they do the live auction and see if I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's cool. That is very You're cool. cool too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So um what is like something that you really like to appraise and like do you get really excited about anything? I like the stories. I've met America, really? just as you have. Yeah. I've met America. Mm -hmm. I've talked to many different people. We have terrific stories about oh I found this in the yard sale.
this little ear tag? Mm -hmm. This little ear tag is a company in Germany called the Steiff Company. Okay. And I think you can see it right there. You oh, yeah. This? Original. Yeah. Yep. And so it says Steiff right there. Mm -hmm. Well, this company starts in the latter part of the 19th century, so okay. about 1881. Okay. And they make animals. First they make teddy bears. Mm -hmm. And then they make all kinds of animals because the woman who started it, yeah. uh, a German woman, was a seamstress. And she said, well, everybody's got a teddy bear. Mm -hmm. But I think it would be nice if we had other animals. Yes. Yeah, so definitely. dogs and lions and cats and all different types of animals. Mm -hmm. And in Germany, these are really coveted collectibles. Okay. This one is probably from the 1950s or 60s. Okay. This one is later mm -hmm. than the ones that are the most valuable. Some of those teddy bears go for $10,000, $12,000. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they're a lot of money. This particular one is, you have your mic on? Yes. You do? Okay, honey. Mm -hmm. I didn't, wasn't sure. Uh -huh. So basically, this particular one is probably from the 50s to the 60s, and it's valued about $250. Okay, wow. For a stuffed animal. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean all stuffed animals are going to be that high, mm -hmm. but stiff ones are. Now, you see the little metal ear tag? Yes. That's usually the tip-off for appraisers. We look at mm -hmm. it, we go, oh, the ear tag's there, it's probably a stiff. Yeah. But during the 1940s, during World War II, mm -hmm. that metal was not used because Germany uh, needed the metal for the war yeah. effort. So you have to be a pretty good appraiser to make sure. Now, we had a, an easy one because the metal was right here and the tag mm -hmm. was right here. Yeah. But a lot of them are stifes, but the metal's not there. Yes. Yeah, so you have to be able to identify it by the construction of the object. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is called a double weave. Okay. And it's done like that because they use a little bit more material than okay. the cheaper manufacturers yeah. of them. And that's basically what you're looking at. And they do elements like this, like they give you the paw pads on the bottom. Uh -huh. And a lot would.